Hey, this is Ken from Coffee Crafters, and we wanted to do a video on ducting. And so this would be a video, uh, we hope people will watch, we'll send it to them uh, before they do their initial installation, because how you install your ducting has a huge uh, impact on how efficient it is and what the CFM drives. Um, we've had a few calls lately, and I went and visited a customer uh, who had an installation that absolutely wasn't working and there's good reason for that. So one of the things that we tell people is if you're, this is the little, um, this is I think the 660 CFM Raycon, which is one of the blowers we recommend for the Mini. Um, and then we have the 1500 CFM, one that goes with the XE. These blowers, the little blower we say there, you should start out with a 30 foot run, that's the maximum run. That's if you were going straight um, ducting out to the discharge side with no 90s. For every 90 degree elbow you put in the system, you deduct five feet. So if you have four of these in there, you would deduct 20 feet from that and that we would recommend only a 10 foot run um, to get the, the performance that you need. One of the problems that we have is we do supply a, I think it's a 20 foot roll of this flex ducting. Um, these are only intended for short runs. So we just did a, um, a little test out there to demonstrate how inefficient this is. And if you can get in here closer, Bryce, what happens with this ducting, if you see these pleats are not extended, every one of these pleats creates a vortice behind it. And that vortice uh, all the way around creates a roadblock for the air to go through. So we did a little test and we stretched this out, this 20 foot section we had out there. And it was sucking at 415 CFM. Kerry just let go of it and let it coil up and it went down to 265. And then if you put some corners in it, it's even worse. So usually when people are uh, complaining about their blower, um, not sucking up all the chaff or smoke, we say send us a picture of how you've ducted it and it, it will find that they have a lot of flex duct that's not tight. So you'd never want to install it like this. You want your flex duct, you stretch it out and what that does is it smooths the inside. Anytime that you can use rigid ducting and not use flex ducting, that's what you should do. Um, because this makes a huge difference in the, in the airflow. Um, and one of the things to remember on the rigid ducting, if you do it um, using the snap together uh, standard ducting, which is fine that you get at a home center, it does have a seam in it. And it's good if you tape the seams with some silver tape because the discharge side of the blower is pressurized and the pressure will push that smoke out through any joint. The same thing is true if you have any kind of a fitting on it. If you've got 90 degree fittings in your system, make sure to tape around those, those fittings so that it, it doesn't leak smoke. The absolute best insulations are the ones that go from the discharge of the blower right out through the side of the building. Um, because that's, that's the shortest run, you're going to get the best, the best airflow. Um, the next best, if you have to turn a 90, you're going up through the ceiling, or if you have to go down or run down the wall, use rigid ducting for that. On the discharge side, we really recommend not to use the soft flex unless you are right by a door, and some people have done this. They will roll their blower out to, uh, by the door of the garage and, and prop a little short piece of flex on it, um, this type of stuff, which is fine. On the intake side, it's completely okay to use this from um, your blower will come with a Y. Here, I should have brought one in, but uh, your blower comes with a Y. One of those goes to the roaster hood. One of those goes to the bean cooler. So that's really what this is intended for, those short runs to the chaff collector, the bean cooler, and the hood. Just remember, when you, when you do these, stretch it out so that it's tight. Pull all the, the creases out of it and make it as flat as you can. That way the little vortices in there are, are much, much less. Um, yeah, and one of the other questions we get a lot is, can I go into an existing duct? The answer is sometimes it would be okay, most of the time it's not. And one of the problems is you have to have access to clean your ducts because coffee roaster fires are always about dirty ducting because the volatiles that come off, 
um, the oils, sugars, and the smoke stick to the side, and uh, you know they create a real fire hazard. So you suck up a 470 degree bean in there, and they can combust. The other thing you want to do is if you have one of the or larger roasters, or if you're operating with a chaff canister, pull the the flex up off the top fitting of the chaff canister and look inside. If you see, can no longer see the metal through the debris, it's time to change your ducting. Because people ask me, do I do it every six months or three months? It depends on how much you roast. Some people might not have to change it for a year. But if you want to check it to see if it's, it's time to change it or not, you pull it off the chaff canister, you look inside, and if you can no longer see the metal, then it is time to change the duct. You also don't want to use any plastic fittings because this will contain a spark or a you know something going in the system even the aluminum you know will, will contain that the ga exhaust gas temperature in a mini usually doesn't exceed 135 degrees and in the XE it shouldn't uh, exceed 170 degrees but if there's a fire you know and you get a little flash you want it to be able to contain that and um, not melt the plastic so we've seen that 100 and 80 degree, 190 degree air that you get from uh, poor ducting um, actually melt those plastic fittings. And that's the other thing. One of the reasons you want good airflow is the higher the CFM through the system by having a good straight ducts and smooth duct if possible, the lower the exhaust gas temperature. And the lower the exhaust gas temperature, the safer it is for the system. I've measured the exhaust gas on ours. We have a little thermometer on the wall, so I'm always looking at what the exhaust gas is. But I've seen people's exhaust gas temperature, uh, especially in an XE that's not properly vented, exceed 230 degrees, which is way too hot uh, for the type of system that we have. That would require actually special type of insulated ducting, which the system doesn't need that if it's properly vented. So those are some ideas on ducting and hopefully that will help you avoid some of the mistakes that uh, cause these systems not to be efficient. If you have any questions about your installation, it's always a good idea to call us because we've seen all kinds of installations and we should have some type of solution that can help you out. Thanks.